fine rain, you know the kind of stuff that just that just gets you soaked, but gradually over time. Let me come closer. Anyway, anyway, what are we talking about? I'm going to give five tips today about my advice on how to walk the coast to coast. The first thing I would say is take cash with you because a lot of the places that you'll stop at do not take cards. Some of them do, some of them don't. So I took around just over £200 or about £200 and I didn't spend all of it. I spent almost all of it. But it was really helpful in just buying a coffee every now and then and you'll, you'll come across lots of villages and bakeries and things like that where you want to spend a little bit of cash and just get some food and things. So. So that was really, really helpful to have that cash. <laughs> it's raining, it's raining. Okay, the second thing I would say is train. So you're not, it's a long, it's a long distance. So I did it in nine days and it definitely needs training. You need to be, a, you need to be fit for this. And obviously you can't train like that amount of walking at, at all really but what you can do is you can strengthen your legs so do things like weights strengthen your shoulders to help you carry your pack and just try and do some running and and some hikes really i went to wales before and did a couple of days hiking and i'd done ben nevis earlier in the year and, and various things i'm not super fit at all but i do think that for example i rolled my ankle a couple of times and i think having done the weights really helped to kind of even though my ankle tipped over to help just give that stability so I think I do think that really really helped on the walk, but you have to you have to be fit and as I said you can't you're not going to be able to train and walk that distance every day. But try and do multi-day hikes, so do maybe two or three nights out just to see what it just to get used to it before you go and to so you know what the experience is going to be like. I think I averaged 21 mile days and obviously some were shorter and some were slightly longer, and the terrain was different all the time. So. A lot of it is there's, there's a mental side to it. Obviously, you're gonna you're gonna get dirty. It's gonna be uncomfortable. You're gonna smell, and that's a huge part of it. It's not just the physical aspect. So as long as you think about those things in advance and you get used to those things, then then you'll be absolutely fine. And it's a it's an amazing experience. I thoroughly enjoyed it. What I did find is when I came back, there's that I things just feel more, much more comfortable, and I've definitely changed my outlook in terms of. I can, my tolerance is a lot higher when it comes to even just going on runs and stuff. I, I feel like I can um, do a lot more now and, and probably slightly fitter now. So, and, and just the mental side, you just get very, you got very used to feeling uncomfortable. My third tip would be navigation and GPS. So I took one of the A to Z maps with me, which was really really helpful. It had like a yellow route for the whole thing. The problem with the maps is they are always going to show a bird's eye view, like a 2D view, and, and some people take the the sketch. Uh, the guide, the guidebooks, which show you like a 3D sketch of how the route looked. I think that could be really helpful. What I used as well was my GPS on my phone in, in, in connection with that, and I'd recommend. It's really, really starting to rain now. What I re recommend is you, you you do need a GPS as well as the map because with the bird's eye view, you don't. It doesn't show you specifically where you are, and you can't you can't gauge that by looking at on a very different view as you would be no normally walking. If that makes sense. So I used the two, and that really helped. I did go wrong an awful lot. And I probably did an extra few miles and spent a long time just going wrong and that was incredibly frustrating so if you can get on top of that really early you'll quickly learn after going wrong a few times that you won't want to do it again and you'll be much more alert to going wrong and, and taking the wrong path so but definitely with my phone I was able to find where I was on the, on, on the map from the bird's eye perspective and then I could kind of coordinate the two and, and manage to negotiate my way through. Okay my fourth tip would be plan what you want to achieve so as I mentioned did I mention it? I did it in nine days and I can kind of went out with like a raging bull approach and I'd seen some guys online who had done it in 10 days or 11 days and I wanted to beat that and that's just kind of how I am. I'm, I tend to be competitive so that's not that's not going to work for a lot of people and, and, and for example when you go to on this kind of walk you're going to want to see it's a beautiful walk and you should be taking your time and you should be taking the high routes and looking taking in the, the vistas and all of that kind of stuff which is not which was not which was not my aim really I'm, I, I was into the kind of trying to get it done quickly kind of thing and, and still saw all the views and stuff but if I did it again I'd probably take take my time more and kind of appreciate it a bit more but by the same by the same token I didn't want to be out there for 
you know, sort of two weeks, and some people I met were doing it over 18 days, and I, that just wasn't for me, so I'm, I'm really happy that I did it in nine days. And, did I mention I did it in nine days? And, so yeah, so for me it was just about hitting that 21, sort of 21 mile point every day, and, but again, so decide early, decide before you go, plan your route, what do I want to achieve, do I want to do it quickly, do what sort of, how many days do you want to do, what do you want to see, and sort of take in the history of it, because it's, it's obviously a Wainwright walk and there's a lot of history around it in terms of the ashes. I believe was spread around one of the tarns up in the Lake District. Please comment below if you know where that was. My fifth tip, fifth tip would be... What's my fifth tip? Okay, my fifth tip would be wild camp. It sounds like a bit of a no-brainer, but I know a lot of people do it and they stay in accommodation and they do other, other things. So. My, I, you know, I enjoy staying in my tent, and I don't get me wrong. From the videos, you'll see that I actually, there are a couple of nights when I stayed in B and Bs uh, out of the nine days, and that was amazing. It was really good to refuel and, and all that stuff. But but try and get out in your tent as much as possible because it's a different experience, and you can't beat waking up in a tent in the middle of nowhere. And it's, yeah, it's fantastic. So that would be a recommendation. I think other things that I, I would mention are foot care so that's that's crucial I got a blister and I think I don't know why I think my footwear was my footwear was really good um, my foot my feet got dirty I, I took three pairs of socks I rotated two and tried to keep them clean and wash them when I could and I think eventually it caught up with me and, and I wasn't able to wash them as much and I think that the dirt kind of caused a caused caused a blister and I know some people have walked it without blisters obviously I was doing a lot of miles every day so I was I was expecting that at some point I don't think that's necessarily avoidable at all especially when you're doing 200 miles so just try and look after your feet keep them clean rotate your pairs of socks keep clean pairs of socks take Vaseline because you'll reduce the effect of friction on your feet it will kind of provide like a gasket of sorts that that will help that kind of stuff out and, and blister plasters and all that kind of stuff then just a couple of other uh, sort of ad hoc things really would be pack light it sounds like a no-brainer but especially in the Lake District and you're gonna I had moments when my shoulders were just painful and I I'd use my hands to try to lift my pack up just to try to leave relieve the weight and adjusting my straps constantly so obviously a good pack is essential mine was the Osprey Talon 44 litre you'll see um, I've got another video which kind of takes you through all of the kit so I'll, I'll put a link up a link up somewhere just so you can you can see that if you want to so it's yeah pack light because at any point you'll 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 wish you you wish you did if you haven't again it comes down to affordability as you guys know a lot of the stuff today come goes up in price the lighter it is so I kind of got what I could afford and there are things like the Lanchan tent which are coming a lot lighter and you can get affordable things which are light so pack as light as you can my, my, my total kit weight was was around 10 kilos including food and water which which I was pretty happy with and lastly just set, set off each day early set off as early as you can I always had in mind that I'd be walking around eight hours a day which is kind of I kind of treat it like a work day so get up start work at eight ish normally and finish finish sort of afternoon five or six o'clock so, but what I found was due to other circumstances, getting having a late breakfast and those kind of things, pack, by the time you pack away your tent, it can be quite late. So, I'd recommend getting up early, get, getting the miles done early. I I, te I tend to perform a bit better in the afternoon from a physical point of view. It takes me a long time to kind of get going, but I did find just getting to that lunch period. After that, it was much easier and getting some food in. So, and the earlier you start, you can get the miles done. And ideally, you want to be rocking up to these places when it's still daylight and you can kind of enjoy the evening and. and that kind of side of things so start early okay guys i think that's that's it for me please subscribe if you haven't already done so thank you for everyone for subscribing hit the thumbs up hit the bell notification new videos every single week and thanks so much see you on the next one guys cheers i'm gonna go and tell myself off sounds a bit dodgy see ya